Yeah, I think a primary objective of the offseason was fortifying the offensive line. I think that was that was goal one. You'll feel good about what we were able to accomplish there, but uh, still a lot ahead. From a mental makeup standpoint, really excited about the group. Uh, we know Morgan. He's a warrior. We'll get to know Tyron as we go, but uh, when he's on the field, he's pretty darn good. And uh, John Simpson, I mean, he's a war daddy, so we're excited to get him in the building also. I think for us to be able to uh, get a majority of our objectives done in free agency, it, it, it frees us up and gives us great flexibility moving forward as we as we talk about pick 10 and, and really the entire draft. We can really focus on the best player available for us. But the reality is winning off seasons doesn't matter. We got to win football games. And no matter how much excitement there is around the organization, no matter how much excitement there is around free agency or the draft, none of it matters. We just got to keep our heads down and find ways to get better, continue to have a great offseason. When we get to the season, we got to find a way to put Winston in the win While winning the offseason may not matter as much as winning games during the season to Robert Sala, the Jets have had quite the offseason so far. Welcome into a Jets Overtime special, the State of the Jets presented by Moody's. I'm your host, Caroline Hendershot, joined by Eric Allen and Ethan Greenberg. We have a lot to talk about tonight with all of the moves the Jets have made in free agency, and they went into free agency with a lot of needs. Joe Douglas needed to get on that offensive line. He did that. We needed a wide receiver. He did that. And a defensive end. He did that. So speaking just as a broad question what stands out to you about this new look 2024 offense well i think bottom line for the jets the focus of this offseason was in the trenches and you mentioned the offensive line that was the number one focus after starting 13 different combinations joe douglas had a lot of work to do and he got it done free agency inking john simpson to a deal coming back and trading for former jet morgan moses and then landing a big fish greens in Tyron Smith. Yeah, I think actually Joe Douglas might not be done because you think about the health question marks, the age question marks with the two tackles and Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses. 10 overall tackle is not off the board, I don't think, for Joe Douglas. And I think it'll be interesting to see how he navigates that position. I know we're not the only ones as excited about Tyron Smith as Brees Hall is. The Jets social team had some fun with him and all of his reactions as each acquisition kept coming in for the offensive line. And then, of course, the big one with Tyron Smith landing. And Brees' face really says it all. But that wasn't the only big fish that Joe Douglas landed. Hassan Reddick, the defensive end that is now a Jet, coming from the Philadelphia Eagles, what kind of player is he, and what is he going to add to this defense, Ethan? Well, I think consistency in terms of a pass rusher. You think about Bryce Huff now with the Philadelphia Eagles. He only had one season with double-digit sacks. Beforehand, he didn't have more than five. Hassan Reddick has had at least ten in each of the last four seasons. And not only that, he leads the NFL over the past two seasons with 12 and a half fourth quarter sacks. Who would you say is the happiest person in the building this week, EA? I would say it's definitely Robert Sala. And in fact, I had an opportunity to catch up with him to not only talk about the Jets' latest acquisition, but the Jets' free agency as a whole. Coach, when you got back from league meetings in Orlando, what was your reaction when you heard the trade was finalized that you guys were obtaining Hassan Reddick from the Philadelphia Eagles? It's good, you know, we're excited about it. Hassan has, a, um, has been a producer his entire career. Unbelievable character, uh, unbelievable mental makeup, and uh, I, I've always said it, uh, with pass rushers, the more the merrier. So uh, if we can get a couple more, that'd be awesome. What about the changing parts of the defensive tackle position next to Quinton Williams, spe specifically Javon Kinlaw, and then Lucky Fotu? Yeah, um, first it was awesome to get Sally back. Really excited to have him back in the fold. And he's a, uh, another one of those guys that brings energy for days and just an unbelievable locker room presence. And he's, he's getting more and more productive on the football field. To get Ken Law and Fotu, we've, we've, uh, we've managed to get bigger on the interior, which was important to us, but not at the risk of losing athleticism. When you look at those two, they're both over 320 pounds. You throw in Quinn in and uh, we're pretty meaty on the inside. What about the safety spot? You guys decide to resign Chuck Clark and obviously you're going to pair him up with Tony Adams. Yeah, Chuck, um, the injury was so unfortunate, but during OTAs he, he gave us just a taste of, of what it's like to be in his presence. And I'm talking about elite character and uh, locker room presence. He's a heck of a football player. We're excited about that tandem. The emphasis of fortifying the offensive line, that might have been the top of the chart. 
here to start the offseason. So what did you think about the additions of John Simpson and Morgan Moses coming back here to one Jets drive and then finally Tyron Smith? Yeah, getting, getting Morgan was awesome. We had him for a year and uh, uh, realized that a year wasn't enough. We want him back. John Simpson, I love his story and the adversity that he had to fight, uh, fight through to earn a starting spot in Baltimore and then Tyron to get someone of his caliber. He's proven he's been one of the best pass protectors in all of football for a very long time. Does what you guys did with Brees Hall help you this year in your plan of attack with a guy like Mike Williams? Brees, um, coming off the injury, obviously, it, you know, a lot of it was our, our doing. We wanted a slow play. The young man didn't want to push him out there so fast. So you're looking at ways to, to create situations where defenses just can't tee off on one person. You look at Garrett now adding Mike Williams and Conklin and Rucker, you know, we feel like we've got a good group of guys. Why has he been such a beast in those one-on-one -on -one situations down the field? Uh, he's, he's big, he's long, he doesn't panic with the ball in the air, uh, he's got great body control, he's a pretty damn good receiver. <laughs> Alright, so can we end here, draft on the horizon, but can you talk about the roster as a whole, where it is right now? Everyone's always excited uh, about what they do in the preseason. There's 31 other teams that feel like they knocked their, their offseason uh, out of the park. And uh, it all matters because of preparation, but, um, but all the hype, all the excitement, it's, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't done anything yet. Got a lot of flexibility heading into that draft now. Oh, yeah. jody has got to be excited. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Thank you. We'll have to see what it all looks like when the Jets are back in action. But coming up next, we're going to dive into the Jets' new look offensive depth chart. We'll be right back. This is a Jets overtime special presented by Moody's. You have highlights as an offensive lineman. You're laying people out. Drop it! I just want to be the most aggressive person on the, on the field. You know, you say 50-50 ball, but it's more 70-30 when it goes up to him. A bunch of new faces on the Jets offense in 2024. And now let's get into the unofficial offensive depth chart. And let's start with the offensive line, but specifically the tackles, left and right. What stands out about them with you, EA? Well, Joe Douglas in free agency, he signs Tyron Smith, but he uses the trade avenue to reacquire Morgan Moses. Tyron Smith's going to line up at left tackle. Then you have Morgan Moses, a former Jet, coming back. Now we go to guard. You see a familiar face at right guard and a new face, again with the Baltimore Ravens, at left guard with John Simpson. What do you guys think of them? Well, listen, Simpson's a mauler. He was uh, a key contributor in that Baltimore Ravens' number one ranked rush defense. But heading into the offseason, we're all wondering where was Elijah Vera Tucker's permanent home going to end up? These acquisitions mean that, hey, maybe he's the guy who lines up right to center Joe Tippmann. Yeah, and I think Joe Tippmann the same thing because last year we saw him actually get his first game action at guard before finding a home at center because of injury. And I think that when it comes down to those guys, now you have homes for everybody. Now let's jump to tight end because this is fascinating to me. At tight end, you have pretty much the same room that you had last year, led by Tyler Conklin. You have depth with Ruckert. Now you see the wide receivers. That room has changed. What is different about that room? Well, I will say when you take a look at the receivers real quick, like we have Xavier Gibson here in the unofficial depth chart in the slot. Mm -hmm. This is not to say Alan Lazard's future with the Jets is numbered, but the Jets do have flexibility with Wilson and Williams who can line up at any position, whether that's outside or inside. Well, Lazard also has experience playing the big slot from his days in Green Bay. And again, he's going to be reunited with Aaron Rodgers. But... Tyrod Taylor comes in here to back up Aaron Rodgers, and what he brings to the table is great experience. That's going to be a change. On the outside, though, Mike Williams, he's a prototypical big X, one of the best down-the-field threats in the National Football League, 31 career touchdowns. But this is why Joe Douglas deserves a ton of credit, because 
I think a lot of people were thinking, all right, well, maybe the Jets could go tackle. Maybe they could go receiver. Let's see what happens in free agency. He dresses both positions. Yeah. So now he's really in a spot where he's in the driver's seat. Right, and that flexibility at 10 is so key. Like you were saying, you don't have to do anything. You get depth, you get needs, you get all of your wants, you're good to go. Now, for more on our newest wide receiver, we have Quincy Inunua breaking down some of Mike Williams' best plays. Jets fans, you got a good one in Mike Williams. We've all heard of the law, what goes up must come down. But with Mike Williams, he's got his own law. Any pass that goes up must come down with him. So I'm going to go into a couple plays here to show just exactly why that law is, holds true every time. So on this first play here, a lot of times we tell receivers, you got to take that outside release on a go route. But when you're a guy like Mike Williams, you can take any direction you want because you know that there's an opportunity for you to come down with the ball regardless of where the DB is. The reason why we say outside release is because when you're outside, you get an opportunity to see through the DB and right to the quarterback. You get a better view. But when you play inside, now the DB's on your back. But when you go up like Mike Williams, it doesn't matter where the DB is because you have an opportunity to come down with it every time. This second play is a defining play for him, honestly. Tyrod Taylor said earlier in the week, this guy, instead of a 50-50 ball, it's a 75-25 ball. This is the reason why, right here. In this play, the Rams are in cover too, so it's a hole shot. You gotta know when you get a hole shot, there's an opportunity for the ball to be outside and for you to possibly get hit by this safety right here. So what you wanna do is make sure you protect yourself. And what a way he does that here. The extension to go up, make this one-handed grab, also be able to get two feet in and protect yourself from any possible hit. So just a great overall play by him. And what a great weapon the Jets are gonna have in 2024. Stick around, we're breaking down the unofficial defensive depth chart coming up after the break. They knock people back, then this is a knockback front. I'll conquer it all. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Happy to be here. I'm happy to get rocking, and we we we're gonna fly high. We covered what the offense is going to look like, but now let's look at the defense. Starting with the unofficial defensive depth chart, we're going defensive end first. We have Jermaine Johnson and Hassan Reddick. What do you guys think about the defensive end room specifically? Well, listen, we drew straws, and that's the only reason John Franklin Myers is not on the outside as well. The Jets have a bevy of riches at the defensive end position. Who would have thought when we started this offseason that Joe Douglas would acquire Hassan Reddick? Then you think about the interior guys at defensive tackle next to Quinn and Williams, two new guys, Javon Kinlaw, then Lecky Fotu. If you're a Jets fan, you have to be excited about this group because there's still the same amount of talent as last year, perhaps more. They're younger and they're freakier in terms of athleticism. And did we just commit a crime by talking about the Jets' defensive line by not acknowledging Quinn and Williams? Aaron Donald just retired, so Quinn and Williams can make the argument that he's the top defensive tackle in all football. Now let's jump up to the linebacker group. We've got C.J. Mosley and Quincy Williams, still the same look as last year. But now let's look at the safety and the cornerback position because we still see very similar names from last year, but not all that have actually played, starting with Chuck Clark. Well, yeah, Chuck Clark, unfortunately, he went down in OTAs and was lost for the year. So he's penciled in as you're starting strong safety, whereas Tony Adams at that free spot. I actually think safety is the one spot where if, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, you would almost guarantee Joe Douglas to add a body, whether that's free agency, the draft, undrafted free agency and really quick at corner, Isaiah Oliver is one of those guys where it's like, he has a role on defense, replacing Bryce Hall, who went to Tampa Bay. What do you have to offer, not only as a defender, but also a special teamer? Finally, in free agency, we can't forget the kickers. They are football players too, and how about those dudes returning? Thomas Morstead, Greg Zerline, for my money, you were talking about Benton before, this is the best kicking duo in the National Football League. We talked about Xavier Gibson before. I'm excited to see what kind of returners Brant Boyer trots out there. Not at punt returner, but at kick returner because of the new league 
rule. Yeah, I'm also excited to see that kick return position and how it morphs and the new dynamic of it all with those new rules. We're going to be looking at the biggest changes across the AFC East and where the Jets stand right after this break. We'll be right back. Now, we've talked plenty about this Jets roster, but where do they stack up against the rest of the AFC East? Because last year, the AFC East standings had the Bills and Miami both at 11 and 6, going 1 and 2. Then the Jets at 7 and 10, and the Patriots at 4 and 13. Now, there were a lot of departures and additions of some big names across the AFC East. But EA, what are the biggest changes up in Buffalo? Well, we know the Bills have a star quarterback in Josh Allen, but the pieces are certainly dramatically changing around him. You start with Stephon Diggs. He was traded to the Texans this week. That followed the Bills' number two wideout, Gabe Davis, signing with Jacksonville. On defense, Buffalo's going to have a new look at safety. But the Diggs trade was a massive move. I'm asking myself, guys, how much can Allen carry this team in transition. Yeah, but to your point, the Bills are still a force to reckon with. And actually, one of the guys that left Buffalo stayed within the division. He went to the Miami Dolphins. That's Jordan Poyer. You take a look at a changing landscape. Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator, he's no longer there. He's with the Eagles. Christian Wilkins is gone. Andrew Van Ginkle is gone. Jerome Baker and Brandon Jones. You think about that roster, you know their offense is going to be dynamic. What does the defense look like? The Dolphins are going to have to pay for Tua Tungavaloa, so they're going to structure contracts with that in sight. And speaking of the quarterback position inside the division, the Patriots go out and sign Jacoby Brissett, and they might add another young signal caller in number three overall in the draft. Now, a sneaky big departure that isn't listed on that graphic is Bill Belichick. I mean, losing the head coach that you've had in that place for the last 20 plus years is going to be a big loss for the team. Now, the big question, where do the Jets stand in the AFC East after free agency? Well, there's a lot of ifs with the Jets, but right now on paper, you could make the argument that this, this is the most talented roster in the AFC East. You also can say if you're in Buffalo, the Bills have won in Division three straight years that they have the best overall player in Josh Allen, and that is the most important position. So I'm going to answer this without the green colored glasses. I'll put them on the table. The Jets have the best roster in the AFC East. But I will say, to EA's point, Football's not played on paper. I liked what you said earlier. When you look at the roster, where is the hole? You cannot find one because it is so stacked. I think it's more so about keeping everyone healthy, keeping everyone on the field, because if everyone can play and is on the field, this Jets team can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. Now, those are our two cents. Media members and insiders around the league spoke about their thoughts on what the Jets have done this offseason at league meetings. Take a listen. <laughs> To me, this time of the year is more exciting than the regular season, believe it or not. I know we get caught up in the in the games and all that, and that's all exciting. But the business season, there is so much more going on. It was like a very obvious offseason, right? I think if you were a novice football fan and you watched the New York Jets last year, and then you determine what they need. Okay, you need an offensive line, you probably need a backup quarterback, and you need another wide receiver. Like, okay, well, then they went out and did exactly that. Look, we knew that they were going to do something to beef up the offensive line and improve it, right? No matter what. Now, it was just a combination or a question of what was going to be the combination that they were going to go get. And I didn't know that that would be the trio, Morgan Moses, Tyron Smith, and John Simpson, but that's what it turned out to be. Tyron Smith, the guy was born to play left tackle. So, you know, he can step in and produce right away. And, you know, Morgan Moses, trusted veteran, you know what you're getting. John Simpson's a solid guard. He's a little bit better than you think. Mike going through being as, as big as he is, his thing is downfield. He has this unique ability to make incredible catches downfield. You hope that this is a Jets team that is playing meaningful games in December and January. I think the main thing for Mike Williams is you have him when the games really matter. They, they put themselves in a position where I don't think there's a spot where you say, yeah, they have to take care of that in the first or second round, which is where you want to be going into the draft. I don't think it'll be like last year. Um, I don't think it's going to be the wild expectations. I don't think it's going to, you know, it's it's going to be a little more measured. Um, same success is still potentially out there. They've added a lot of really compelling players. And I think you could ask this question for almost all of them. Can they and will they stay healthy? And if you could tell me right now that all these guys are going to stay healthy this year, then they're going to have a great year, the Jets. And before we go, 
A big celebration is in order for two former longtime New York Jets football support staffers. Equipment manager the late Bill Hampton Sr. and public relations director Frank Ramos are among the 15 recipients of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's third annual Awards of Excellence. Congratulations to both Frank and the Hampton family. Now, we'll see you next time on April 20th for the NFL Draft Preview Show. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you then.